for him. You like the house nigga. Ooh. You like the house nigga. You work for him. And you know you hate him. I can't work for nobody I know I hate. So, so your argument is bullshit. You done? Yeah, I'm You finished or you done? Hey, you see when the white man walk away, you see what, the, what he do, right? He what? Remember, I just said a nigga like him is here just to make sure don't nobody learn nothing. Right. The second the two white men walk away, what he do? He he sniff behind his butt, but he's like a damn dog. That's right. that's, that's what he hit for. You know, I, I been peeped it. Right? Go ahead. They say it's a new year. I got a resolution. Negroes and Latinos repent. This is revolution. Y'all believe in Jesus Christ? Yes? No? Why not? I do. You do? But you don't. What you believe in? I believe in a higher power. I know this God. What you believe in? Say that again, I could do. I believe in a higher power. I don't know if God. Not necessarily God, but a higher power? Yeah. Okay, what makes you uh, have that train of thought? I don't know, just a bunch of bad stuff that goes on. That's you? I don't think that God would. Come a little closer, sis. I can't hear you. What's your name? I'm Avery. Avery? And what's your name, sister? Oh, uh, sorry, my bad. Cherish. Cherish? Yes. Jacob. It's nice to meet you. Okay, now say that again. I couldn't hear you. I don't think that like, God would allow certain stuff to happen. Like what? Why you don't think that? All right, let me show you something. Give me Isaiah 59. I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to show you what happened. Now, you don't believe that God would allow things like slavery and certain tragedies to happen in the world, right? Right. Okay, so do you believe in free will? Okay, so let's say somebody has the free will to practice a wicked lifestyle. Should there be punishment for that? In the form of what? So if I kill somebody, should somebody communicate to me that that was wrong or should there be an action for that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens if I say, okay, cool. You talk to me, you give me my therapy and then I just go out and kill somebody again, then what? Detention, is that an action? Yes, is that, a, is that could I view detention as negative, something negative or bad that happens to me? Could I view, so say I kill somebody, right? And you say that person deserves detention. What's another word for detention? Is incarceration another word for detention? Con a consequence, yeah, it's just, it's just like a consequence, right? Now me, because I'm gonna inherit that consequence, I could view that as a travesty, right? Or something tragic, right? So the reason I'm saying that is because for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction, right? So God isn't just gonna allow humanity to do whatever they want and not let anything happen because of it, right? So that's why things like slavery and war and death and murder are allowed to happen in this world because of the transgressions of man. Originally, when the earth was a paradise in Genesis, those things didn't exist because man was on one accord or that sect of men was on one accord with God. So these tragedies, give me um, Genesis 6 and 11. These things that happen, and that's, that's a good point because a lot of people do say like, hey, if there's a God, why would he allow us to go into slavery? Why would he allow World War I, World War II, nuclear warfare, um, pestilence, starvation? Why would those things happen? It's because of the transgressions of mankind, right? Go ahead. This is the book of Genesis chapter six and verse 11. The earth also was corrupt before God. The earth, so at this point, right, when Noah was alive, the earth became corrupt before God, not like it was in a time of who we know as Adam and Eve, right? And the earth was filled with violence. And it was filled with violence of mankind, right? Now, I don't believe in free will, but some people will say they do, like yourself. So man took that will to practice violence, and because of that, there was an equal and opposite reaction, right? And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Uh -huh. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. What's another word for for? Dawala. Because. because. So the end of all flesh has come 
before me because the earth is filled with violence. It's not like God just letting this happen. It's happening for a reason, right? So the reason why these things happen in the world, once again, is because man is corrupt. And God can save us out of it at any time. Is it more than that? I think that's it. What's your, you got a precept? Go ahead. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 16 and verse, I'm sorry, 12. It says, as his mercy is great, so is his correction also. That's right. His judge, he, he judges a man according to his works. The sinner shall not escape with his spoils, and the patience of the godly shall not be frustrated. So if you if you practice wickedness, you receive judgment from the Lord through those uh, tragedies, right? Yeah, my bad. I have a quick question. Go ahead. Um, so I just wanted to know, like, what is this? I see you guys with your, like, you know, thing. see you at uh, you know, uh, <laughs> So who we are, we are the school of Sakari, right? We're all throughout the nation and some um, places outside of America as well. We teach that blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the real 12 tribes of Israel, according to biblical prophecy, history, as well as archeology. span When you study our history, you realize that before we came to America, where were black people before we came to America? Africa. What part of Africa? Where was the slave coast in Africa? West Africa. You know why they don't teach you that? You know why they don't teach you that? Try to keep us hidden. They want you to discontinue from your heritage. Exactly. They don't want you to know who you are, right? We, well, we won't. The sisters, the sisters on point, right? Uh, let me let the train pass. But they don't want you to know that because we were in West Africa before we migrated to West Africa. We were in our homeland, the land of Israel, because that's where we're from originally. Also, I see he's filming over here. Is this going on, like, anything, like... Well, we, 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 we have, a, we have a, um, a YouTube page where we provide content for people so they could go on our channel, and y'all can follow us, and they can um, view the material and study it and, be, and form their own opinions based off the knowledge we bring out. All right. Is right. it possible we can't post this one? Like, I got I, you, you all right. Here, I got you. Like, I got you. You straight. You yeah. straight. You straight. You got a precept? The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14, verse 2. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. Above. So they, 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 these nations know that the children of Israel are above everybody else. And the reason they don't want us to know that is because if you know that, you begin to act like that. And when you act like that, you live a righteous lifestyle. And when the children of Israel live a righteous lifestyle, that's when it's prophesied that the Messiah will come back and save us from the, from our captivity, right? So, would you ask me again? Oh yeah, you, no, no we were, West Africa, that's what we're talking about. So, we were brought to America from West Africa, right? Be before West Africa, we were in the land of Israel. We left out of Israel because we, after 70 AD in the sacking of Jerusalem, Rome basically ransacked Israel. And because of that, we fled out and migrated into West Africa. I feel like I'm going off the point. We're talking about the tragedy, the tragedies, right? We got that. Why else don't you believe in God? Go ahead. You go ahead, speak your piece. Uh, lovely conversation. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to go because I'm trying to find food down here. If you guys know any places down here, you let me know. Man shall not survive off of bread and water alone, but every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. That's okay. right. Uh, all right. Well, all right. I'll see you guys. So listen, y'all like Israelites. Fear God, keep the commandments if you want to be saved from your slavery. Y'all think you in slavery right now? I don't, I don't want to answer that question because you're trying to keep me, trying to keep me here. You are in slavery right now. But I'm all right. I'm to eat. All right. So the problem we have with our people, give me Hosea 4 and 6. The problem we have with our people is our people don't really care about their history, their heritage, things of that nature. And that's going to segue into the topic I was going to talk about, especially our women, right? Our women don't necessarily care about the standard of life we had before colonization. And that leads us to believe that the black woman is God, right? Or that feminists are actually practicing femininity which is far-fetched and extremely far from the truth right it makes women masculine and men weak 
because we have accepted the terms and conditions of um, a destructive agreement that we made with the rest of the nations. Right, go ahead. It's the book of Hosea chapter four and verse six. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you, that you shall be no priest to me, seeing you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. So the Lord said, because you rejected me, I will reject you and I will forget your children. So we don't have that hedge about ourselves like we used to. The Lord can guide you into a, a peaceful and productive life, or he can lead you straight into destruction, depending on the choices you make within your life. Right? Now, you got a precept? Now, I made a post on Facebook, right? And it went viral. I said that women don't create life, men do, all right? And the main thing I have in my inbox is a bunch of angry black women, black women, right? Calling me gay, saying I'm stupid, saying I don't know anything. Uh, and it's a couple simps, a couple suckers, right? that's riding the, cur the coattail of these angry women, right? So, what time is it? So let's talk about what has become of our women today, right? Unfortunately, the system and the powers that be have taught our women to be extremely promiscuous, hypersexualized drug addicts, right? Um, under the false conception that they don't need a man, um, that they are in strong and independent, right? That they can kill babies, right? And that they don't have to listen to anything a man tells them. But what a woman is gonna realize real soon is you can only be a feminist in a first world country where the white man shows up to kill your man whenever y'all have an argument. That's when you could be a feminist, right? When it's war outside, you can't be a feminist. When, when you need to actually go out and catch the food you're gonna eat, you can't be a feminist. When you have to be protected from the barbarian that's gonna kick your door in, you cannot be a feminist, right? These things are taught to you to destroy you and to incentivize you to leave your own man. That's, that's the real reason why so-called feminism is so prevalent today. It's a, it's a means of destruction to our women, right? You got something? Go ahead. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse three. But I would have you know, that the head of every man is Christ. Our Messiah, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, is the head of every man. That's why we follow his command, right? Go ahead. And the head of the woman is the man. Is what? Is the man. The head of the woman is the man. If you have a man and he wants to be a professional um, jump jacker, right? And sit there and say, I'm gonna do the most jumping jacks in the world. Then it's your job to give him some order and say, you can do it, babe. You got it. Do your jumping jack. And, and, and of course, that's a silly point, but the, the point I'm making is that regardless of whatever lifestyle your man choose, hopefully it's righteous, if you accept the role as his woman, you're supposed to be a support unto him and help him be the best at that. You got something? Okay. Uh, give me that you shall serve in Genesis. Where you at? 3 and 16, that's what it's at. Go ahead. And the head of Christ is God. And what? And the head of Christ is God. So you have the most high at the top, Yahweh Shai, or who you know is Christ, underneath the most high. You have the man, then you have the woman, and then you have the children. But in Satan's government, the way it is, is white Jesus at the top, right? Then you, because Jesus is God to them, then you have the woman, then you have the children, and at the bottom is the man. It's, it's ass backwards when you deal with Esau's kingdom, right? Go ahead. It's the book of Genesis chapter three and verse 16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In sorrow you shall bring forth children. So you're gonna have birth pains. You're gonna go through pain when you bring forth children as a curse of starting that act of rebellion in the garden, right? Go ahead. In sorrow you shall bring forth children, and your desire shall be to your husband. And what? And your desire shall be to your husband. The main thing you should desire in this world is whatever your husband desires. You should be all about your husband. Are women like that today? Absolutely not. 
They don't care what a man wants. What they say, I'm the prize. No, you're not, according to the Bible. The Bible say, your desire shall be unto your husband. The Bible say, you are a help me. The Bible say, you are the weaker flesh, which is why that spirit of wickedness came to Eve in the garden, right? Now, did God say, Eve, why did you do this? No, who he went to? Adam. But Eve initiated the act. So why would God go to Adam? It's because the Lord is dealing with the man. You're not the prize, sister. You are secondary to a man. That's the bottom line. And the reason why men are so weak today is because the government has actually got them to believe that they are underneath a woman. It's madness. It's ridiculous. Could you imagine what's going to happen when World War III really start cracking? These men ain't going to know what the hell to do because you're so soft and weak. And on top of that, you're not incentivized to give your life up for war because the woman doesn't even appreciate you. The woman was the number one factor why men go to war and give their life up. To protect who? Women and children. When you have a nation of rebellious women and rebellious children, you are not willing to sacrifice your life to protect them because they don't respect you. It's an equation for disaster. And the man is literally eating his nation inside out. And they do this because they don't want you to have children. They don't want you to build families because the powers that be want to depopulate the world and gobble it up for themselves. And women, some women, are so shallow in the mind, they can't read between the lines and see that this is all planned. You're being manipulated. I don't need a man. So you want to get a degree and make $150,000 a year and be 50 in a big old house with nobody in it? The most beautiful thing you can have as a person is to see a house full of your children and your grandchildren and 50, 60, 70 people that came from you. That's an accomplishment. Not getting a paycheck that's above everybody else's. The US dollar isn't even backed by anything. You sacrificing your life for nothing. It's not gold. You know what a dollar is, what an actual dollar is? A dollar is a measurement of gold. That's what the word dollar means. Initially, you can trade in a certain amount of dollars and get gold back. Go to the bank and tell them, give you some gold for your dollar. You can't even buy gold for what it's worth. It's so inflated because of the cost of labor. And people are so dumb, they don't under, people don't understand this. This world is on a crash course. And it starts with them manipulating our women. Do you know why Arabs are fighting against the white man? Because they want to get married to a virgin and, and teach their kids. They don't want Western democracy for their family because they understand it's a destructive doctrine. Women are the freest they have ever been and you're the most sexually promiscuous. And you're also the most under the influence of drugs. What's the, what's the statistic? One in every three black women are on antidepressants. And you're the most depressed, right? The, um, the marriage rate is at an all time low. We are the most sexually promiscuous generation. Everybody's having sex, nobody's getting married. Single parents everywhere. And women are raising a generation of fatherless children that walk the streets gang banging and killing somebody for looking at you crazy. It is, it's insanity, right? Give me that. The book of Isaiah chapter 29 verse 16. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the powder's clay. And the, the, the reason why your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the, what does a powder do to the clay? When he makes a mistake, he spins the wheel, turns it back into a ball and slaps it upside down and remolds it again. God is going to have to do that because the way this infrastructure is designed is in complete madness and larceny, right? It's wicked. Everything is upside down in America. Everything. Go ahead. Ah, for shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not. And as the, as the creation of the creator, we can't ask God why were things made this way. We just have to accept it for what it is, right? But us as the men of the Lord come out and teach our people to practice a righteous lifestyle to combat this very system, right? Go ahead. Right. Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he have no understanding. Right, so we have to accept the way things are and do our part, which is why we come out here. You got that on the Willie Lynch? Give me that. Mm -hmm. 
So this is the Willie Lynch letter and the making of a slave by Willie Lynch. It's on page 15. Now, some people doubt the um, authentic uh, authenticity of the Willie Lynch letter and say it was just created. However, the concepts that's within the literature is true and factual, right? Go ahead. It says, train the female horse whereby she will eat out of your hand. Uh -huh. And she will in turn train the infant horse to eat out of your hand also. Break down, train the black woman to eat from the government and she would teach her children to do the same thing, right? Basically, give her food stamps and child support, right? And give her... That's... Our people are destroyed, man, all right? Absolutely destroyed. 15 feet of sidewalk, Negroes walking on the train track. That's what happened when the father's not in the house. You know when you know a, a you know a, a child that's born that only has his father has the equal statistics as a child with the mother and the father, but a child that only has his mother is twice as likely to be incarcerated, twice as likely to be a drug addict, twice as likely to commit suicide, twice as likely to be homeless, twice as likely to be um, vi uh, committed of uh, uh, incarcerated for an act of violence, right? So if Statistically, the government knows that single fathers are equivalent to having a male and a female parental figure. Why would they still give women the children? It's because they setting you up for destruction. They want you to be that. A, a, a Negro criminality is profitable for the government. It is what it is, right? Why would the government say, no fault, you can have a no fault divorce, meaning you can leave your man without cause, right? And I'm gonna make the man pay both court uh, costs, so for both of your lawyers, and I'm gonna give the woman the children, and I'm gonna make the man pay child support, and I'm gonna give the woman the house because she has the children, and I'm gonna make you pay, the man pay alimony for the rest of your life. They're incentivizing women to leave their men. That's what they're saying, we're gonna pay you to leave the black man. And women bit the bait and now they are strong and independent in a nation that men died and went to war for. It's madness, right? And of course the Lord is doing, I wouldn't care because I'm an Israelite. Our women are righteous. We practice a righteous lifestyle. We believe sex is marriage. Our kids, are, we was at the new moon, the kids was happy. I'm sad for y'all in the world. Because 20 years from now, you know, they say 20 years from now, over 50% of women will be over the age of 30, single and childless. That is horrible, horrible. And it's because the Lord is getting ready to destroy America. That's why he said, surely if I had not um, sped, up, sped up the times, no flesh should be saved. Because there will literally be a gender war. Even, uh, even us, the Lord's will, right? Go ahead titled The Breaking Process of the African Woman. It says she is the most important factor for good economics. Pay attention. Why? Who knows why the woman is the most important factor for economics? Who knows? She spends the money. Because what? She spends the money. Because she makes up the consumer-based market. Women spend about 70% of all money spent in America. Women are far more frugal with their spending. Who knows why? Because typically men, since the foundations of the world, the man was the one working for the money. So in a sense, we, un we truly understand the value of money. Women just start making money. So they're a bit immature with it, right? Not saying anything to women, I love women, but we have to be factual and, and analyze these things, right? Go ahead. That's why companies like Gillette, even though it's a male-based company, they still make commercials for who? women they pander to women that's why you have something called body shaming when you tell a woman to lose weight right slut shaming when you tell her stop being a hoe right it is what it is but for a man we can take all the criticism in the world you criticize a woman now you hate them all it's insanity go ahead when in complete submission she will train her offsprings in the early years to submit to labor when they become of age. She will make them good old slaves, right? Go ahead. 
we have reversed the relationship in her natural uncivilized state. She would have a strong dependency on the uncivilized uncivil nigger male, and she would have a limited protective tendency towards her independent male offspring and would raise male offsprings to be dependent like her. Natur na natural, her naturally have pro nature, so like nature have provided for this type of balance. Hold on, I feel like I missed something. Let me see. We have reversed the relationship in her natural uncivilized state, right? So we have reversed the relationship in her natural state, right? She would have a strong dependency on the uncivilized nigga male. She would have a limited, move your thumb, protective tendency towards the independent male offspring and would raise male offspring to be dependent like her. Okay, I didn't miss something, go ahead. Nature had provided for this type of balance. We reserve reverse nature by burning and pulling a civilized nigger apart and bull whipping the other to the point of death, uh -huh. all in her presence. By her being left alone, unprotected, with the male image destroyed, the ordeal, the order, caught, ordeal. the ordeal caused her to move from her psychological dependent state uh -huh. to a frozen independent state. To what? To a frozen independent state. So what they did was they would publicly humiliate the black man in front of her, and that would psychologically cause her to move away from the black man, not wanting what he received, and to become unnaturally independent. The way they do that today is what? They call black men hyper-masculine, toxic masculinity, right? They say we predators. They say, y'all killing more, y'all the ones killing women. They say all these false conceptions about black men to make the woman disassociate herself from the very person who's willing to give his life for her. To destroy us as a whole, as a collective, right? It's not you or me, it's us together. So no, we don't hate women for the scoffers that's gonna say that in the comments, right? Go ahead. In this frozen psycho psychological state of independence, uh -huh. she will raise her male and female offsprings in reverse roles. And she will raise her children to do the same thing. That's why a lot of brothers come up thinking that they fathers ain't nothing, right? Who's seen a video where the brother said, I met my father, he's a good dude. A lot of brothers go through that because the woman will say, your daddy don't want to be around you. Your daddy don't love you. Your dad, he don't care. He said you was a mistake. Whole time, you're mad because you ended the relationship and now he has another family. And it's harder for a woman to get a new man with the child than it is for a man. Because as a man, my child is my responsibility, not a woman I meet. But as a woman, your child become whoever, whatever man you deal with responsibility. And men know that. So you want to be like a man, but we don't have the same options in life, right? So we got to combat that. Is that it on that? Uh, that's it on that. What you got? Go ahead. Give me that. Give me that one. David's wife. First Corinthians chapter eleven. It says, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 8. It says, For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. It says, Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. So the woman was created for the man. It is not good that man should be alone, right? However, we have to understand that the things we are practicing today are destructive and detrimental to so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We got to get back on that road we was on before colonization, before we practiced Western democracy and the ideals of Western democracy. I had a point in my head. I forgot it that fast. Did you get what I want? Give me, um, uh, Esther 1 and 11. Is that what I want? Right? The strong, hey, we, the, the, there's, there's, what's coming to this world, you don't want to be a strong and independent woman. You're going to want to have a man around you, right? Give me, give me Isaiah, is that what I wanted? 111? Yes, hold that. Give me Isaiah 4. Go ahead. It's the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 6, and verse 20. Didn't David return to bless his household? So Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, how glorious was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself today in the eyes 
of the handmaids of his servants. So David was dancing, praising the Lord, and Saul, the original king's daughter, was scoffing at David because his garment fell because he was praising the Lord so hard, right? And she said, huh, how glorious are you dancing in front of them women and you, you, your drawers fell or your garment fell? She, she talking trash, right? Go ahead. As one of the vain fellows. And, and she called David vain, right? My, remember, this is the future king who the Lord has anointed. And she talking to David recklessly, like women do today, right? Go ahead. Shamelessly uncovered himself. And she called him vain and shameless. Wow, ain't that a black woman, right? That's a black woman. Go ahead. And David said unto Michael, it was before the Lord which chose me before your father. Ooh. And David had to humble her and said, I was, I was doing that before the Lord who chose me over your daddy. That's why you mad, right? Go ahead. David wasn't no sucker, man. David wasn't no simp. No. David let her have it. Gave it to her like a hot plate, right? No. Go ahead. And before all his house to appoint me. And he chose me before your father in his whole entire house. He ain't choose your, your daddy, uncle, his cousin, nobody from that lineage. He chose me, uh, the, somebody that deal with goats. Now how about that, right? Go ahead. To appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore, I will play before the Lord, and I will yet be more vile than us, and will be based in my own sight, and of the maid service which you have spoken of. So David told her, you mad because the Lord chose me before your daddy. And if I'm not mistaken, David didn't deal with her after that. Go, go ahead, get it, get it. And of the maid service which you have spoken of, of them shall I be had in honor. Therefore, Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no children. She did what? Had no children. God God cursed her womb. And that's why a lot of women are barren today, because God is cursing y'all. Us too, but we talk about black. We talk about men every camp. We can talk about women today, right? Go ahead. Had no children until the day of her death. And that's a horrible thing, man. That's a curse. Women think it's cool to, I don't got no kids. No, it, that's a curse from God. This, give me give me that uh, nine things which I deem uh, j uh, joyous in my heart. Sirach 25, 7. You got it? Uh, no, nah, just, just hold what you got. What else you had? Yeah, Esther 111? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Hosea what? Isaiah? Uh, seven women? Okay. okay. It's the book of Sirach. Chapter 25 and verse 7. No. There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy. Uh -huh. In the tenth I will utter with my tongue. Uh -huh. A man that have joy of his children. What? A man that has joy of his children. Such a cruel and evil government to allow women to take them babies from a man. That, that baby is of his father. Men create life, not oh. women. That's right. A woman is born with every egg she will ever have. Her body can never create any more. That's a scientific fact. A man is not born with sperm. He begins to produce it in the pubescent stages or puberty or after puberty. That's a scientific fact. They teach women, you are the bringer of life. You create life because they hyping women up. No, they don't. Man, we are gods. Teach up. The man. That's why God deals with the man. That's why God is a man. Okay? So we got to get out of that weak, weak, weak mindset. And such a, once again, such an evil, corrupt government to take a man's seed from him. Read that again. Huh? Put the cigarettes down, brother. They're killing you. Go ahead. There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy. In the tenth I will utter with my tongue. A man that have joy of his children and he that lives to see the fall of his enemy. And, no, and, and we gonna get both of those in the kingdom of heaven. That's right. We gonna raise up them babies and ain't no white man gonna take them from us no more. And we gonna see that white man fall and go into slavery. That's what the Bible say, all right? So we got that on uh, uh, David's wife, right? Okay, yeah, David wasn't no sucker, right? Let me show you another brother that ain't simping. Give me that when, when uh, the brother called Delilah a hyphen. Give me that. One and eleven. Book of Esther, chapter one, verse eleven. To bring Vashti the queen before the king with the crown royal. Start at verse ten. 
verse 10. It says, On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded the human, Bitsa, Arbona, Victa, and Agbata, Zethar, and Carcass, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of Ahasuerus the king. So the king was merry with wine, and he commanded his women to come before him. Right? Because a man loveth nothing more than a countenance of a woman. Right? So the Bible says, go ahead. To bring Vashti the queen before the king with the crown royal, it says, to shew the beauty in the princess her beauty, for she was fair to look on. He said, I got a bad little joint. I want to check her out while I'm, yeah, I mean, feeling good. You understand? That's what he said. So he said, bring my shorty this way. Right? Go ahead. But the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlain. She said, I ain't coming nowhere. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm a strong and independent woman. I don't, I don't listen to the commandment of the king. Who is he? That's what she said, right? Go ahead. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him. And because she did that, the king was angry. Don't you get angry when your woman don't listen to you? Right? Because you mean good, and you say things for a reason. I'm not picking on you. I'm telling you something because I love and I care about you. Right? So he got mad. Go ahead. Then the king said to the wise men, which knew the times, for so was the king's manner toward all that knew law and judgment. Toward all that knew law and judgment. Go ahead. And the next unto him was Karshina, Shethar, Ampatha, Tarshish, Marys, Marcina. Jump down to 15. Verse 15. What shall we do unto the queen Vashti according to law? because she has not performed the commandment of the king Ahasuerus by the chamberlains. So the question of the wise men became, what should we do because she didn't follow what the king said? Mind you, this ain't just a regular brother, this is the king. So they say, what should we do because of this? Because obviously she disobeyed a direct order from the king, from, from her man, let alone the king, right? Go ahead. And Mimica answered before the king and the princes, Vashti the queen have not done wrong to the king only. They said she not only did she do wrong to you by disobeying you, but also to all the princes and to all the people that are in all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus. They said she did wrong according to every man in this kingdom. Why? Because the women are going to see that and they're going to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They're going to follow suit. That's not, I want, they're going to, uh, I can't think of the word, right? They're, but basically, they're going to do the same exact thing. Why do you think they got these, these TVs, these shows on VH1 showing loud, obnoxious, belligerent black women? Why do you think they do that? It's to teach other women to act the same exact way. 40 years ago, women did not act the way they do today. It's because of the Cardi B's, the Meg the Stallions, the Hot Girl Summers, right? Them taking a bunch of strippers and writing music. You know, they don't write their own music. They have professional music content creators that write music for them. So what they do is they search through the crowd for promiscuous, immoral women, put them on a pedestal so we can idolize them. That's what they do, right? That's why the, the men said she not only did wrong by you, she did wrong by every man. That's what she's doing. She's promoting something that's going to be not beneficial for our nation. Keep going. Ah, it says, verse 17, for this deed of the queen shall come abroad into old women, so that they shall despise their husbands what? in their eyes. Read, read that again. So, it says, verse 17, for this deed of the queen shall come abroad into old women, so that they shall despise their husbands. What she did is going to make all women despise their husbands. She's going to be a negative influence on the rest of our women. Go ahead. Ah, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes, when it shall be reported, the king Ahasuerus commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. Keep going. Likewise shall the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princes, which have heard of the deed of the queen. Thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. Thus from that shall arise much contempt and wrath between men and women like we see in America today. Give me what, give me what they did. Uh, Keep going, 19. Uh, it says, if it please the king, it says, let there go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes, that it be not altered, 
Yet Vashti come no more before King Ahasuerus. They said what we going to do is don't ever call her here again since she's so independent and rebellious. Go ahead. And let the king give her royal estate into another that is better than she. And give everything she got to somebody that's better than her, that looks better than her, that acts better than her, that's more submissive and subservient than her. Right? Now, we're not, we not saying leave your wives, brother. That's not what we're saying. We're just showing you a point that it's okay to stand up and be a man. And you don't have to bend over backwards for a woman. That's not manly. That's not godly. Right? Go ahead. Does he? Yeah. But we are, we are the Lord. He has stipulations. He has stipulations. Don't get me wrong because no love comes without conditions. That's true. You know what I mean? So he has his stipulations. I feel like he, he, he put up in the back of us a lot of chances, bro. Yeah, that, because God, give me that God is, um, give me, um, Sirach 2 and 11. That's true, right? And I'm not, I'm not, when I say that, I'm not saying don't do nothing for your woman. You can do, men, men go to work, blood, sweat, and tears every day for their women, right? But what I'm saying is, you don't have to go out of your way to please a woman that's not a, that's not grateful and that's not willing to play her role as the woman. That's true, but you can't teach somebody that doesn't want to be taught. Okay? So you have to understand that yes, you can show a woman, but initially you shouldn't have to because you're supposed to raise your daughter to be a woman that knows how to play her role. Right? I don't agree with that. You ever heard the term, a child is like a sponge? Yes. It's human nature to be taught and to learn. Yeah, but we're already born selfish and um, that's, just, that's just how we are. So we, yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying by that. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. The, the point is, is that... Because I, no, I'm not gonna lie, I be listening to y'all brother and a lot of what y'all gotta say is really good stuff. Uh-huh. Really good stuff. You know what I mean? About black men being the word doing stuff. Is the white man the devil? That's a good point. That's a, that's a good point. Uh huh. Because they have the means to help you. Are you sure? Okay, let me let me ask you this. Who is the white man according to the Bible? Who is the white man according to the Bible? A human being? Um, no, what race does he belong? What people group is the white man in the Bible? You believe in the Bible, right? He, do you believe in the Bible? Do you believe all races of people are recorded in the Bible? Yes. Okay, so who does the who is the white man in the Bible? Yeah. No, I'm not I'm not saying what is he. I understand he's a person. I'm saying, what racial group does the white man belong to in the Bible? But why does it matter if he's just like me? It, it, that's not the question. I'm just asking you, who is he in the Bible? I don't know. Do you want me to show you? I would love to be. All right, I got you, brother. What's your name? My name is Raymond. Raymond? Yeah. Jacob. It's nice to meet you, brother. You. Let's, let's, let's get Esau in the Bible, okay? Genesis 25. Where you at? Oh, don't worry about that. Go ahead. 25 and 25. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 25, and verse 25, or verse 24. When her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Uh -huh. And the first came out red all over, like a hairy, like a hairy dog. This is Rebecca, right? Uh -huh. So she has twins in her womb. The first came out red, right? And hairy all over, like a hairy garment. Why was that first baby red? I don't know. Maybe he was just a little pale. Maybe his, maybe his what? Oh, okay. That's that's a good that's that's a good point. That's a good point. Okay. Who says the devil has a color too? Who says the devil? what does the word devil mean? Wise one. No. You thinking about um? No. What's the the illuminator? The he shall bring light. Lucifer. That's what you thinking about. The word devil. Devil just means deceiver. Somebody who deceives. Right. Right. But that's not the point though. Go ahead. You got to stick to the point. Remember, we talking about Esau. All right, we talking about Esau, but you, you brought up the characteristics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that wasn't the point of what I was bringing up. Oh, okay. Go ahead. 
And the first came out red all over, like a hairy garment. Uh -huh. And they called his name Esau. Who? They called his name Esau. Okay. And after that came his brother out. And his hand took hold on Esau's heel. Now, why did they describe the first one as red and hairy, but they didn't describe the second one? It's because the second one came out looking like every other baby. The first one, the first one was an anomaly, which is why it put emphasis on his characteristics. All right, so you, you, you believe that everything, I believe in everything in the Bible is true, right? Right, correct. God's mind is not, God's mind is not like my mind. Okay. So, I'm not gonna understand everything that comes out of the Bible. I, no, I don't expect you to. You know, so, when you have a certain interpretations on the Bible and stuff like that. Give me, there is no, give me Second Timothy 3 and 16. You can only kind of go on your own human thinking. I got you. That's not, is it Peter? Yeah, second First Peter? Everybody's second Peter, three and 16? Okay. <laughs> good looking, you a good brother. I, you a good brother. I'm, I'm listening to you, brother. Not, I don't feel like everybody's meant to interpret the Bible, but I, but I do believe the more and more you read it, I feel like God will open up your eyes. I agree, I agree. And, and, and so you learn more. I agree. But, with, but you have to be willing to accept that understanding. And it's not the more you read, it's the more commandments you keep. Yeah. If you don't keep the commandments, give me Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 4. Let me show you something. And I understand what the truth is always cold. Right. And you know, and people be feeling like sometimes that you're going to like the truth, like who it's supposed to come from. Uh -huh. you know I mean, like, you're not going to like the truth. You're going to hate the truth first. Yeah, that, that's true. That, that, the, 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 the scripture says that the word is like honey in your mouth, but bitter, bitter herbs in your belly. So it's cool when you get it, but when it sit on your spirit and it convicts you, then it makes you angry because you don't want to do what the Bible says. Let me let me get a couple of like precepts. I'll pray. This cool, but remember where we at. Remember, we talking about Esau, the devil, because we was talking about the white man. I just wanted to get a couple points for two things you said. Give me that. This is uh, Wisdom of Psalm chapter 1 and verse 4, NLT. It says, Wisdom will not enter an evil person, uh -huh. nor will it dwell a person enslaved by sin. So it's not it's not how much you read. It's about keeping the commandments. First, you have to apply the commandments of God to your life, and then God will give you wisdom, because wisdom is a gift that God gives you. It's not something you earn. Right, I didn't become who I am because I read the Bible and study precepts. I know what I know because God gave me the understanding to pre to teach His word. Right? Definitely, but I, I feel like on some of this, that when we talk about that subject, I feel like sometimes when we think we got it as far as God then gave it to us or whatever, we kind of push it a little bit more than what it should be instead of just to sit back and knowing what we know and let it unravel all the time. Did Christ sit back and let it unravel? Yeah, he, he had a rope to play. He, he, Nah, Christ Christ taught thousands of people. I know he had a role to play. He could have stayed here as long as he wanted to. Should I do what Christ did? Should I move in the same manner as Christ? Did Peter did, did Paul sit back and chill? Did Paul sit back and chill? No, Paul was always on the move. Should I do what Paul did? We're not talking about Paul in that manner. But I'm asking you, should I do what Paul did? Oh, all right, that's why we do what we do. So so if somebody so if some brothers feel like we pushing it too hard. I take that as a compliment because that's my job. Well, to push it on you and to put it in your face every single day. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's, that's a good marketing technique. But, but that's when it comes down like the souls and stuff like that. Like you really have to be kind of careful and make sure you analyze everything that you're saying. I agree. Because everything has to be looked at from different angles. Oh, that's, that's the point we get. Let me, let me read you something. So I can't just completely just say that you're not right, but I have to come back to my own mind too and be like, you know what? Maybe. You have to study to show yourself approved, right? Get the don't just take what I say and say, oh, it's okay. Yaquab said it is good. No, go back and read it. But, but certain words mean different to anybody who reads it because depending on our way of life and how we grew up, the story might mean something else for somebody. And that's why human beings have conflict because I got you. Let me read. Let me read you something. I got you. It's the book of Second Peter's chapter one and verse twenty. Yeah. Knowing this first. That no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Read it again. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. None of this is of a private interpretation. So I can't say this is what this means, and then that brother says, no, this is what it means. The Bible say what it's saying. It's not it's nothing to interpretate. We're reading it verbatim, right? So verbatim meaning word for word, word for word. Now, if it says the sky is blue, and then I say, well, what that really means, brother, is that the sky is beautiful and majestic. That's an interpretation. But when I'm reading something verbatim, it's not me interpreting well, it. It's just telling you what it's saying. But that just goes against what basically like a person coming out and teaching the word. Because a 
person can read something, but like I said, they might not interpret like you interpret. So you're out here trying to teach them how, basically how it should be interpreted. Well, some people don't understand it because it just wasn't given to them. Yeah. Back to what I was saying, that wisdom is a I, gift I, that God I, gave you. I can agree with you on that. Give me that, give me that, and then we're going to get back to Edom. That's Edom, that's Esau? Right, wisdom, Where you at? Wisdom is also a gift the devil gives to you, too. Just hold it, because I want to get who he is first. Say that again. The wisdom is also something that the devil gives to you. Give, give. I, I agree, I agree. That's why, that's why the white man run the world, because he got wisdom from the, from the wicked spirits on the left-hand side. The worst serial killer that you can think of under the right circumstances that you too. I disagree. I think that God gives you the spirit that you are meant to have and you play out the role. Because I don't I don't believe in predestination. Right? I don't, I don't, I don't believe in that either, but I feel like a human being is capable of whatever asking, wherever you can. What's the deal, brother? Salawan. I'm capable of. Mm -hmm. Anything that you've done, I've, I've done well, it. I, well, you know what? I agree with that. Anybody's capable of anything. But I believe that as humans, we live out the, the a role that was scripted for us before we're born. We had the other nations in slavery before. All right. So they basically just repeated what you did already. No, the, the, here's the difference. We were ordained no, 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 to, no, one no, second, one second. Right. We were ordained to rule this world. Right, the world was created for us. That's this whole entire planet belongs to the Israelites. Yeah. Everybody else is just extras in this movie. So you're black, you're just it's not about being black. It's not heaven is not a place you go when you die. Heaven is an existence or a, a condition condition on earth. Okay. Right. I, I get that. So you don't you don't die and go to hell or heaven. So the world was just made for color people. Give give not color people Israelites. Give me that uh, second Ezra. So you're not an Israelite, you're not, the world was Six. No. So I'm an Israelite. I know. I'm sorry, I'm saying, okay. Why the other nations here? So why are they here? So, oh, to serve us. To serve us. Yeah. I'm going to show it to you. Go ahead. Hey, hey, that's crazy, ain't it, brother? That's crazy, huh? When, when, I, when I found that out, I said, what? I rule the world? That's crazy. But well, we're going to show it to you. Go ahead. Or at least I'm supposed to before I went off and seen it. He came, but is he coming to rule the world when he come back? Shalom, God. Is Christ coming back as the conquering lion? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes. That's right, brother. If the world keep on teaching, y'all still feed that night. That's right, brother. If the world keep on teaching, y'all feed that night. That's right. If the world keep on teaching, y'all feed that night. That's right, brother. Simple That's, God pass it through and God bless you. All praise. Hey, God bless you too, brother. See, we are, we in the spirit. That's the spirit of the most high. Hold on. Let me let me get my point in the Bible right quick. Then save your point. Six and nine, right? That's what I want. Six and nine. No, six and fifty, fifty, fifty-four. Six and fifty-four. This is the book of Second Ezra, chapter six and verse fifty-four. And after these, Adam also, whom you made of Lord of all your creatures. Of him come we all. Everybody come from Adam because Noah came from Adam and everybody comes from Noah after the flood. Right, go ahead. And the people also whom you have chosen. All this have I spoken before you, O Lord. You know, a side point, a lot of people be like, if y'all believe there was multiple people in a garden, how does everybody come from Adam? Obviously, because God killed everybody and then Noah created the rest of the, right, simple. Go ahead. And all this have I spoken before you, O Lord, because you made it the world for our sake. You hear that, brother? He made it the world for our sakes. As for the other people. As for everybody else, like you just said. Which also come of Adam. You have said that they are nothing. They are what? That they, they are, are nothing. nothing. They are what? They that they are, are nothing. nothing. Everybody else is nothing to God. Don't matter. Including the white man, brother. Go ahead. But be like unto spittle. Like what? Be like unto spittle. That's how God see the rest of the nation. Hold on, we ain't done, we ain't done. Go ahead. And have likened the abundance of them. That's the, that's the key, liking the abundance. What does the abundance mean? All of them. If you take every single, not the majority, every single heathen, man, woman, child, baby, and infant, and put them all together, one second, 
He have likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falls from a vessel. Like water you spill out of a bucket. That's how he look at them. Hold on, hold, wait, brother. Cause I, wait one second, brother. I feel like you, you, you just trying to rebuttal. Listen to what we saying. Listen. Go ahead. And now, O oh Lord, behold, these heathens, which you ever, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and devour us. But we, your people, whom you have called, your firstborn, your only begotten, and your fervent lover, are given unto their hands. If the world now be made for our sake, why was the world made? Why do we not possess? Read that again. If the world now be made for our sakes. The world is made for our sakes. So he's asking if the world now be made for our sake. Why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? Why we don't run it because we send it transgress, right? So that was the point. Now make your point. Yeah, so basically I'm a writer. So mm -hmm. I'm going to use words in their proper form. Now you say abundance. If I have abundance of food, that's not the same as saying I have all food. But it didn't describe a specific food. It says he likened the abundance of right. them, and the the, the 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 subject of that was the heathen that's in general. So that's the no, that's the all of them. But abundance, that's not the same. Give give me the new another translation. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. This is this is we got you. This is Isaiah forty and fifteen in the NLT. No. For all the nations of the world. Oh, every last nation of the world. For all the nations of the world are but a drop in the bucket. Same thing we just read in Isaiah. They are nothing more than dust on a scale. Uh -huh. He picks up the whole earth as though it is it is it were a grain of sand. Uh -huh. All the wood in Lebanon in Lebanon's forest and all the Lebanon's animals would not be be enough to make a burnt offering worthy of our God. Uh -huh. The nations of the world are worth nothing to him. What? They are worth nothing to him. God don't care about the other nations. In his eyes, they count for less than nothing, mere emptiness and forth. He don't give a damn about the rest of the nations. Uh-huh. Look up the word abundance in the dictionary now, and I promise you, it's not all. That's not even that. I, I, I get the, the point you're trying to make, but that don't matter. We talking about do God care about the other nations, and he don't. What, what did we just read just now in Isaiah? Uh, uh, all right, but when you said abundance, that tied everything together. Dude, when you as far, as far as saying about other people, so when you say the abundance on something, then you put something in a hole. So once you put something in a hole, you can't say everything from abundance. Okay, I got you, brother. That's all I'm saying. The white man is the devil, all right? That's right. That's what you believe. No, that's what you should believe. I believe he puts you in slavery. I, I, I believe black people. Who, 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 who taught? Wow, brother. I believe all of us have devil tendencies. Wow. I feel like this. Who, who, who enslaved your forefathers? Hey, that's that's that's. that's who gives your women the Who gives your women the ability to kill their babies? All right, so 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 let's stop this from happening. How? How? Tell you t tell me how we stop it from right, happening. So, 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 I, I'm king, but you, but you out here preaching this. We don't even have authority over our women. You know why? Because we are under the rulership of the white man. But that's what I mean. Like, let's get together and just really just make a change. I can't get together with you because you will come together with the devil and bring him to our congregation. Hey, hey, bring it out. Hey, I'll die for my people. <laughs> Go ahead. But are they willing to die for me? Nah, this is the book of uh, like Amos, chapter 3. That's true. And Most verse. Black men are cowards. All right, let's read this right quick, brother. Book of Amos 3 and 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Can me and you walk together except we be agree? See, we don't agree, right? Because see, you, no, no, you, me and you don't agree because you are at an agreement with the devil. The Bible speaks of, right? And you, you know what? Let me. Okay, so we was gonna get into Esau, and we was gonna, I was gonna show you how Europeans descend from Edomites, right? And I was gonna show you Obadiah to show you what the Edomites would do. And then I was going to show you in Romans that God hates Edomites, right? So if, let's say. And, and don't know, I love what y'all doing. Like, do you hate who God hates? Yeah, I hate God. Hates. Okay, so give me wrong, give me that. I hate, I hate who God hates. All right, let's let's see. We finna find out. Uh, Romans chapter nine verse thirteen, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So God hates Esau. Do you hate Esau? But do, but it don't matter. God hates him. Let's go personal relationship with Esau. Does God hate Esau? Uh -huh. 
Do, okay, do you hate who God hates? I don't know who you talk, so I can't say I'm that. asking you a question, brother. Huh? Do hate you hate who God hates? Hate God hates. Do, so you hate Esau? I hate what God hates. Do you, oh, so you hate Esau? I don't know Esau. But you just said you hate what God hates. I, I said I, I hate what he hates. Go ahead. I didn't say who he hates. <laughs> hey, brother. Uh, I gotta watch you, brother. No, I'm just saying, so I gotta watch you. So me, you know what the white man called brothers like you? One of the good ones. Go ahead. God, this is the book of Amos chapter 5 verse 15. Hate the evil. What? Hate the evil. What? Hate the evil. And love the good. Beside his judgment in the gate, it may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. Do you hate the evil? Yes. Give, give me that, the border. Give me the border of wickedness. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. All right. So, 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 so if I don't like you, right? Does that make it okay for him not to like you because I don't like you? That's beside the point, brother. No, no, you're you building a straw man argument. No, let's stick to the saying. let's stick to the so topic. God hates somebody you're that commanded. I don't know that you're commanded it. to love your own people. I don't know so you, right. that point you're making don't have no uh, stance to it. Bring it out. All right. Do you hate the evil and love the good? Yeah. I hate all right. All right. Uh, the, give me that. The board of wickedness. Good. Malachi. I think. You, you there? Okay. And then you and you were somebody that people were just to serve us. I also believe. If, if you give more than you take, then you always give in. The Don't change the subject, brother. No, we're gonna stay. We're gonna stick right where we at. All right. Do you hate the evil and love the good? I hate the evil. All right. Go ahead. This is the book of Malachi, chapter one, and verse three. Yeah. And I hated East. I'm sorry, verse two. Go ahead. I have loved you, said the Lord. Yet you said, Where has thou loved us? Was not Esau's Jacob's brother? Uh -huh. Said the Lord. Yet I love Jacob and I hated Esau. He loved Jacob and hated Esau. Jump to the fourth chapter. Four, go to, uh, is that what I want? Uh, oh yeah, okay, go ahead. Verse four, whereas Edom said, we are impoverished. So let you know, when we talk about Esau, it's talking about the whole nation of people. Exactly. We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus said the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. The border, they shall call them Esau, the border of wickedness. Do you hate the evil and love the good? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. And the people against whom the Lord had in the nation forever. God hate them forever. And they the border of wickedness. So do you hate them because they the border of wickedness? I understand all you brothers are saying. Everything is you brothers are saying. But I feel like y'all, you guys are like, like nitpicking on the small stuff. Like when you listen to Dr. Rumor and all Ooh. that, Oh. He's talking about prospering black people. And black people Brent, what you got? How is it the small stuff by us identifying the most evil race to ever exist in the history of mankind? All right. How is that small? All right. We're not talking about a pair of tennis shoes. We're talking about a race of people. One second. We talking about a race of people God created specifically to destroy this world in thermonuclear fire. Right. That is not small. So, so you don't go to work for that white man after you get I have no choice because he enslaved me. So if I don't like nobody and I just, and I just feel like they're the devil, I'm not going to work for no devil. That's not what's So you're going to be a bum on the street? No, I'm going to be trying to cross my own business. How when this is not your society? It's not my society. But I... Right. You, sir, Everything you is. are the bottom of the barrel in America. Do you know that? I, I totally believe it. Okay, so what are we talking about? I'm but I'm saying this to say this. I might have to wait, wait for the work for the devil for a little while, but after that, after those years pass by, I need to be trying to prosper myself. I don't care about prospering in this world because it's going to be destroyed with intercontinental ballistic missiles. Right. Yeah, I believe that too. Okay, so what, so what, prosper, what, what, what's the point of prospering in the world that's going to be destroyed? You know how you're supposed to prosper in this world? In this Bible right here. Uh, of course I am. All right, but where's the action? I'm doing. I'm teaching you right now, ain't I? You talking? I'm teaching you. All right. That's all you're doing, sir. Is talking. But did Christ did Christ talk? Yes, but he talked. Did Paul talk? Christ, Christ healed. I'm 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 healing you right now. You healing me in some way. You have the disease of. Edomite love, <laughs> and I'm washing you with that. No, right? Have, Go ahead. Now, Look at uh, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 22. No. Say not thou, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord, and he shall save thee. So we're not supposed to take immediate action. We're waiting on the captain of the battle. 
our big brother Yahawashah, Christ. Right? Go ahead. Well, you said we um calling out Esau is a small thing. So it's the book of Second Thessalonians, chapter two and verse three. Oh, no. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. So the, the turn to Christ. It said they come and falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, right. the son of perdition. So what we doing? Go ahead, go ahead. Well, I say it's, it's prophecy that the um the son of perdition, perdition is somebody that's um, ordained for destruction, which is Esau. It's prophecy that he's going to have to be pouring out for the things he's done in order for Christ to return. So what we actually doing is allowing for that destruction to come because we revealing who the white man is. Right, that guy, the two devils. No, no, no. Two yes, devils, sir. right there. I want to say this. I want to say this. Uh -huh. So if I hate somebody, right, uh -huh. I'm not going to work for them. We can't have no conversation. Why? Not, I, because. If I, I hate, hate every boss if, I have. If I hate, if I hate somebody, I'm not going to want to be around them. I, that's faith. That you be in faith. If I hate somebody, I'm gonna let you know I don't hate you and I don't wanna be a Roger. I ain't gonna work for you or nothing. So brother, you so you help prosper the person you hate. Brother, the white man is the devil. Stop right. loving the white man. All right, all right. right. All right. You, you loving them because you're working for them. Stop loving the white man. Hey, do y'all love him? Uh, Hell no. <laughs> nah, you don't love him. The white man paying your bills though. And you, and you, and you feed them kids with the white man money. You ain't making sense, brother. Bro, just Stop said, loving the white man. Stop loving the white man. All right. You, you think that? Hey, so what's your God, name, man? So, so God hates you. Tony. You don't love this black man, do you? So, so God hates you. I like him. Yeah, Why? You, no, but you don't love him. Like you don't. <laughs> no, I know you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> he couldn't marry your daughter. No, I know he could. No, he couldn't. You tell your daughter, don't you bring that that Negro home, huh? Come on, man. <laughs> I, I do believe you can be real with me, bro. A I'm a, listen. I, here's everybody, the thing, right? A little racist. I'm not. We but, not the average Negroes that don't understand the basic concept of self-preservation. We don't. Somebody, one second, bro. Brother, you gonna keep interrupting me? All right. Go ahead. Go. Be respectful, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Be respectful. Hey, you don't dictate this platform, devil. That's right, that's right. You don't run nothing up here. He get way more respect than you. You just a white man that's the devil. You yeah. ain't nobody. God hates you. Who are you to tell me anything? Yeah, God, you want me to read how God hates you in the Bible? All right, let's get it. Hey, don't, hey, don't worry and you listen. You gonna see him at work one day, and, and you, you just might be his boss. Brother, you're shucking like and you're jiving. You acting that's like a coon. Right. That's sad. That's what you're doing. You acting like a coon. I'm not gonna be around. I'm not gonna help. The book of Romans chapter nine verse thirteen, as it is written, Jacob have a love. The Lord, the Lord loves Jacob, the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native American man, according to the biblical prophecy, history, and archaeology. But Esau have I hated. And God hates Esau. You guys descend from Edomites. Y'all are Edomites. Do you know who Esau is in the Bible? Esau was Jacob's evil twin brother. Right, that persecuted the nation of Israel right, so to their brother. You gonna keep interrupting me? Be respectful, man. What's wrong with you, bro? Hey, man, I mean, as respectful as I can, but I you need to try a little harder, brother. Come on now, hey, be respectful, man. Go ahead. Uh, Psalms 58, verse 3 The wicked are estranged from the womb, they go astray. You gonna, you gonna talk over the Bible? You gonna interrupt God's word? Bro, I wish I had Geno Genius out here. Gino, that's that's uh how he be talking uh you got Christmas you got a Christmas tree in your living room you're practicing idolatry we not worried about no bald headed Christian pastor man so was the first band so white people descended from us what you was reading so how can you hate something that comes from you go ahead the book of Sirach 20 and 7 for this brother. He said, I agree. <laughs> a, a wise man will hold his tongue till he see opportunity, but a babbler and a fool will regard no time. A wise man, and you steady talking. A wise man will hold his tongue. Do the Bible say, don't interrupt the man in the midst of his speech? Do the Bible say that? Does the Bible say that? It ain't even a Bible. What that is? You, what kind of book is that? It's part of the Bible. I ain't never even heard of it. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. It's the hidden books, right? The, the books, books that his race took out of the Bible because they didn't right. want to see That's us going right. to war with them. That's right. In the Maccabees, right? You guys are Edomites. Y'all going in. What else is that going to show you? God hate Edomite. We, we read that already, right? Let's read, the, let's read the white man going into slavery for him and his Edomite compatriots. Go ahead. Chapter 13 and verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. If you got two ears, listen to this out the Bible. He then. He, he didn't lead it into captivity. Did y'all lead black people into captivity? Did your forefathers lead black people into captivity? 
Did white people turn Negroes into slaves in America? Now you don't know. That's why they the devil, the deceiver, you see? Because they know the answer. One second, they know the answer. You see how he looked me in the face and said, I don't know. He lied straight to my face. Because he the devil. How do you know he did? His people did. And all of them did. You know, you Irish people was in, was in America busting niggas' heads in when y'all was the, uh, under the police force, man. Right? You know that? You know about that? Do you know that Irish people were, were, were in America practicing extreme racism under the police force? Do you know that? Yeah, so you came all the way from Ireland to come here and kick a nigga in the ass, man. Hey, bro, like, 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 they, yeah, I feel like sometimes... Huh? No, no. One second, one second. I would, I would answer your questions, but you, you cooning out, brother. So I'm gonna deal with them. Usually, usually, let me explain something to you. Usually, I would never address the white man over my brother, but you acting real coonish, right? And you're not being logical, and you being disrespectful. So I'm not gonna address you right now. So if you wanna talk to me, sit down. And I'm not sit down, but just be patient and let me deal. No, all black people are not saints, right? Let me ask you something. If I have a dog from the time it's a puppy and I kick the dog, and I beat the dog, and I starve the dog, and then the dog gets out of the cage and it bites my neighbor, is the dog responsible or am I responsible? Why? Because I, I, I treated that dog a certain way and in response to that, the dog began to be aggressive, right? So what black people do to each other today with the gang banging, black on black crime, um, domestic violence, are we responsible for practicing a culture we inherited through slavery or are your forefathers responsible? A human knows a lot more than a dog. I, know it's good I understand that, I, but I'm not asking you what a human knows. I'm asking you who's responsible for the actions we practice in America. Because when we came here, we were stripped from our culture. They took away our clothes, our language, and our social norms and they gave us the lifestyle that we have today. So who's responsible for the way black people act in America? All we know is slave culture. Who's responsible for us eating soul food, slave food? Who's responsible for that? You guys aren't eating that. I'm sorry? You guys aren't eating that. You know, you ever heard of hog mog, chitlins, pig feet, pig ears? That come from slavery. We still eat it today, right? Who, who's, yeah, we do. Well, we don't, but black people do. Who's responsible for that? I just want to raise my hand, brother. What's up, brother? All right, so I'm trying to say, how can you play a part in something and then talk about it? Because let, let me finish talking because I'll let you talk the whole time. So, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it, brother. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, this, 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 this for you when you say you was Irish, right? So this is the Negro question part four, the missing link by Lee Cummings. It says Oliver Cromwell deported the black Irish, Scots and British Welshmen. Wait, who? Alistair, Oliver Cromwell deported the black what? Deported the black Irish, Scots and British Welshmen. So y'all was being racist in Ireland too, man. You know about that. <laughs> Hey, well, guess what? It don't matter. Them your people, right? Go ahead. Oliver Cromwell. Hold on one second. Let it, let, let's be respectful. Let's be respectful. Oliver Cromwell invaded Scotland, killed 4,000 men, and took 10,000 captives. Put a bunch of niggas in slavery. That's what he did. Go ahead. He deported the Scots to American colonies. These black Europeans were sent to Barbados, Boston, Charlestown, Cambridge, Concord, Hingham, Ishwick, Virginia, Newark, and the Southern Plantation. Southern what? And the Southern Plantation. Y'all deported black Europeans to Southern Plantations. Keep going. When the Scottish blacks were driven out of Scotland, the English, white English, moved into the empty land and confiscated their property property, and took their identity. The same way y'all did in America, the same way y'all did in Europe, because y'all not even the original Europeans, same way y'all did in Scotland and Ireland, because y'all not the original Scottish, right? You know what the word Scott means? It means black. Really? Yeah, really. Go ahead. Remember that the Scots, Irish, and Welsh are the same people. 
Oliver Cromwell was Lord Protector of the Commonwealth of England, Ireland, and Scotland after the assassination of the Scottish English King, Charles I. Upon taking military command of the Commonwealth, he invaded Ireland and history states that he committed genocide in Ireland against the black population. Y'all was killing off niggas in Ireland, go ahead. The black Irish that he didn't kill, he sold unto the slave, the slave trade. So you guys are just as guilty as the Western European well, we man. You are well, just as guilty. Everybody from one thing. We don't do that to blacks, Asians. Do you benefit from those actions? Excuse me? Do you benefit from those actions? My, my actions? I'm sorry? My, do I benefit from my actions? Do you benefit from the, from the actions of your forefathers? You benefit from the forefathers. You Oliver forefathers. Cromwell isn't our forefather. He's British. We killed him. Is he is he the same race as you? Uh, that to me is relevant. We all came from. Is, I'm asking you a question. Is he the same race as you? I don't know. No, bro. You might really be white. You, Go you ahead. Might, you, you, you might really be white. He, he, because, because, this is an agent, man. He here to. You know why he's here? You don't Guys anything. like him are here to make sure that we don't and, teach and, people anything. And, and those white people right. back in the day, they didn't explain nothing. They come up with little loopholes and stuff like that. You have to answer any question that I ask. Go ahead. The book of Ezekiel chapter 35 and verse 2. Son of man set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesied against it. And say unto it, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee. And I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. The Lord going to stretch out his hand against Mount Seir, the, the, the habitations of the so-called white man, and make his lands desolate. Go ahead. Right, verse 5. Therefore thou hast had a perpetual hatred, and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel, Hey, y'all going into slavery, man. Go ahead. By the uh, head of the sword, by the force of the sword. Wow. Wow. You work so for him. You like the house nigga. Ooh. You like the house nigga. You work for him, and you know you hate him. I can't work for nobody I know I hate. So, so your argument is bullshit. You done? Yeah. I'm you finish or you done? Hey, you see when the white man walk away, you see what the what he do, right? He was, I, remember I just said a nigga like him is here just to make sure don't nobody learn nothing. The second the two white men walk away, what he do? He he sniffed behind his butt, but he's like a damn dog. <laughs> that's that's what he here for. You know, I, I been peeped it. Right, go ahead. This is the book of First Maccabees, chapter one and verse uh, eleven. In those days when out there, it's like a. In those days when there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, "Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen mm. that are round about us, for since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow." Oh, wow. And that's him. That was his granddaddy. Now, right, joining with the white man. What he said? He said, "You niggas, this worse than the white man." But the white man killed and murdered you and put you in slavery. That's ridiculous, bro. Go ahead. Uh, I'm jumping to verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people and everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yeah, also many of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed it to idols and profaned the Sabbath. And that's what he's about, right? He, he, we act. Listen, I don't even want to get into it. What time is it? Good Lord. Go ahead. <laughs> that nigga was a raccoon. You hear me? Rat what? I didn't even think they came out this early in the day. <laughs> He's supposed to be asleep. <laughs> he a day walker. He a day walker. Good Lord. Go ahead. He was really getting on my nerves too. This is the book of Lamentations chapter four and verse 17. As for us, our eyes has yet failed for our vain help. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. And that's exactly what he's doing. Watching for a nation that will not save him. He dipped and went up the block. They'll probably George Floyd him any time now, right? I don't even remember what we was talking about. Give me... That brother took the life out of me. You hear me? How you doing, sir? What's the deal, brother? Nah, you can't get on the mic. You can listen to what we talking about, though. I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to talk. I'm just trying to see what you guys talk. You believe in Jesus Christ? You believe in Jesus Christ, brother? I'll tell you one thing. God led me to Texas. God what? Led me to Texas. Okay, okay, okay. What you think about yeah, that? Yeah, I believe in God, brother. Huh? I believe in you? 
Yeah, I believe in you, brother. I believe in you, bro. Real talk. I believe in you, brother. You gotta believe in yourself, though. Be careful, man. Right? I pray the Lord have mercy on our people, man. It's a shame. Uh, Black, white, orange, or purple? Nah, it, it, what you mean by that? Why you keep telling me that? People, people are people. What does that mean? Well, he don't even. What does that mean to you? What you got in that cup, man? You want to make a guess? <laughs> That's an incredible hope. That's that hypnotic and that Hennessy, huh? I'm from the ATL, homeboy. Hey, bring it out. Hey, I tell you what, I got four loco right here. But I tell you what. Oh, we. Oh, they banned them at one time. Go ahead, give me what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 8 When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance When he separated the sons of Adam He set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel So the Lord divided the people He separated the sons of Adam So people are people but that don't mean everybody's supposed to be together I hate being with people that ain't my race If you ain't a black, Hispanic, or Native American I don't really want you around me like that To be honest with you Because I can't trust you Right as far as I can throw you. Uh, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> Where you at? Give me Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. That guy was a shucker and a jobber. A job turkey sucker. Ain't nothing but a slice of cheese with the edges cut off. You know what that means? <laughs> Good Lord. Go ahead, go ahead. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12 and verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Do what? Fear God and keep his commandments. Do what? Fear God and keep his commandments. Fear the most high God and keep his commandments for they are the wisdom in the sight of the nations. Okay? G give me that right quick in Deuteronomy 4 and 5 before I wrap it up. For this is the whole duty of man. That's the conclusion of the matter. The end all be all. That's what we're here to do. That's what we will do till kingdom come. I mind. Right. Give me that. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should do so in the land whether you go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. We shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely, this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Our praises to the Most High God. I'm Officer Yaiqua. We are the school of Sakari. We're we'll going to give our praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai Mashiach, which is the name of the Heavenly Father who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And we're going to say, Shalom. Shalom.